Hi guys, welcome to our Q&A video. We just wrapped up a travel series about the Yucatan Peninsula, so today we're answering your questions. Yeah, we have 15 questions. Some of them are specific to the Yucatan Peninsula. Some of them are more general travel questions, but it should be a lot of fun. Thanks for sending them in. Yes, let's start. Let's get started. Question number one, why only the Yucatan Peninsula and not other parts of Mexico? Yeah, so there's a few reasons why we only picked the Yucatan Peninsula. The most important one is that we're probably going to go back to Mexico in the future because it's such like a big and incredible country that we just kind of wanted to narrow it down for this one and pick the Yucatan Peninsula. Yeah, and it's also super close to home. We live in the U.S. Well, live. But you know, you can, we can go to Mexico anytime. It's a short flight. So expect to see more of Mexico in the future. Another reason why we picked it is because we really, it's super touristy, the Yucatan Peninsula, so we really wanted to share with you guys and discover more like off the beaten path options. And I think we found a few options, right? Like mm -hmm. beyond like the really popular ones. And last but not least is that we both love the ocean and the Yucatan Peninsula is famous for scuba diving and snorkeling and the beautiful beaches. So we just wanted to enjoy that very selfishly. Yes, exactly. This one is a fun one and the answer is 95% this guy. How do you choose which places to visit and how much time to spend in each? Yeah, so the first part to that answer is like figuring out which countries we want to visit and most of that is just like a heart thing. Like I have countries in mind that I'm super curious about and I look into them and I'm like, you know what, let's just spend two months there. That yeah, sounds then, pretty good. Yeah, then he tells me and I'm like, do I, am I feeling this country? And then I like do a quick like Google search and I'm like, okay, that country sounds good. But then we arrive in the country and I have no clue what we're doing. That's when all the research, right? Yeah, so I basically form like the itinerary when we go to a place and like I just go deep into Google. <laughs> like Google Maps, like clicking onto towns. Yeah. Like, okay, I want to go to this region, and like this town is famous, but like what's next to that famous town, which is like even better. And it's just like That's, a lot of yeah, hours. a lot of <laughs> a lot of like zooming into towns. And another important factor when we are deciding where to go right now for our situation is money because we are living out of our savings, so we have to go to places that are that we can afford, that are, you know, like within our budget, that accumulation is not like crazy. So that's why we have been to Turkey, the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, which was kind of expensive, mm -hmm. and right now Albania. So for now, you won't see ways of the world in Switzerland, Japan, New Zealand, Australia. Hopefully next year or sometime soon when we can yes, afford exactly. it. Yes, exactly. Or the US. The US is also super expensive. Okay. If you had to pick one place to go back to in the Yucatan, which one would it be and why? That's hard. Um, okay. If I had to pick one, it would be Cozumel. Not because it was like my favorite place like in the whole world, but because I really want to go back and like dive for a week and just like go snorkeling and enjoy like island life. Mm -hmm. Cozumel was awesome. It's a perfect vacation spot. Like, yes, exactly. Scuba exactly. Dive. exactly. Yeah, it was just incredible. We kind of touched on this one on our like all about the Yucatan Peninsula video like two videos ago, but the least favorite thing about Mexico. One of my least favorite things was the heat, and that sounds kind of complaining and kind of weird because I'm from South Florida and can actually tolerate the heat pretty well. <laughs> but for like a month and a half, it was over 100 degrees, and I just felt like my brain was like melting, and it was so difficult yes. to do videos yes. and speak coherently. I think it's for the people of Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza? Did I say it? We're gonna have a quick bite and watch the sunset. sunset. <laughs> now we're hungry. Hungry. <laughs> What's even funnier is our other Air Air Airbnb. Because like when we're in Florida and it's hot, like you're indoors, there's AC, you're not working. But like in Mexico, we had to be out making videos in the sun. With Mayan like, temples, yeah. like busy cities. Yeah, it was intense. The heat was intense. Another thing we didn't love was the lack of healthy foods, which pretty much like applies because we travel long term and we do try to eat healthy, believe it or not. So there weren't like a lot of salads. <laughs> no, just a lot of pork, different variations of the corn tortilla. Which I mean, honestly, I, I miss it right now. Like it sounds great, but just for like almost for like over two months, like it was it was intense. Yeah. It's kind of weird to ask this one now. <laughs> we just said that the food was unhealthy, but favorite street food in Mexico. Okay, so the food wasn't healthy, but it was super delicious in general. And we have a lot of like favorite foods and favorite street foods. 
One of my favorite foods is actually not even from the Yucatan Peninsula, but I'm gonna say it anyway because it's very popular there, is Boyo Estilo Sinaloa. And that's just like a marinated chicken that they grill over like a wood fire and it's served with like rice and habanero sauce. And it is just so, so, so it is, delicious. It is very good. I could use that right now. I'm actually like pretty hungry, like thinking about this. And for me, if you saw any of her food tour videos, you saw my face eating cochinita. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite. In tortas tacos, like you. With rice, like bibin was like anything with cochinita bibin on top, it was my thing. Pregunta numero seis. Somebody asked, is it safe to travel by bus in Mexico? And did we rent cars? And how was the driving experience? Okay, I can answer for is it safe to travel by bus in Mexico? That was like one of the things that I was like more scared about because after you know, before going to Mexico, we went to Turkey, and Turkey felt so safe, and I couldn't process in my head that we were gonna take buses in Mexico and leave like our suitcases like in the bottom. Like I was like convinced that someone was gonna steal our stuff. And it was actually a great experience. I never worried about, I slept on every bus ride. What's I was, <laughs> it was so safe and car rentals, if you saw our videos, you know, like a, a little bit of a yeah, hassle. Yeah, it's a little bit of a hassle, but you can do it. And like the driving in Yucatan, like once you do have a car, it's very easy, like the roads are well maintained. There's very, very, very little traffic, so you can get yeah. around like very quickly. Yeah. So, so it's just a bit of a hassle and a little bit expensive, but once you do have a car, if you have a budget, yeah, and then after you pick the car, like you know, rent it for the whole length of your vacation, and you don't have to deal with like the pickup or return process, then you're right because it's awesome to drive. And then you can do you always know where you are? We definitely do not always know where we are. Actually, it happened to me two days ago, like a little bit like, differently. We're now in Škoda, Albania, and I was like walking through our new apartment like the day we arrived, and I'm like, where the hell did we come from? Like, where, <laughs> where did we just, where were we just? And like, I had to like stop in my tracks and just like, really think, and I was like, oh yeah, bet up. But it took like literally like 20 seconds for me, but. It happens all the time. We talk about this all the time because right now I'm editing like Mexico videos and sometimes when we are in a place like this like scholar that we're not making videos about but we're working like I finish editing and I'm like cooking or something and I'm like where are we and I think we're in Mexico sometimes I think we're in Turkey sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I have no idea where I am so it does happen a lot <laughs> even though we travel slowly but it happens yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Do you feel like if you don't speak Spanish in Mexico, you get higher prices on everything? I think unfortunately the answer is yes to that question. Like especially if you go to like the more touristy areas, they even like say it in places like Chichen Itza. Like if you speak Spanish, you'll get a better deal oh, of like the different like Yes, like the souvenir guys like selling stuff. Like if you say habla español, paga menos. Like if you speak Spanish, you pay less. Like there, it's, it's yeah. yeah. I think you're less likely to get scammed if you speak a little bit of Spanish. But then that said, like you also still get overcharged if you speak Spanish. So like mm -hmm. if I speak Spanish, they clearly know that I'm not like from Mexico. <laughs> so like a taxi driver still is like going to try and take advantage of you yes. even if you speak Spanish. So. Yep. So, so it's better that you like kind of like know how much things cost so you yeah. kind of know when you're taking advantage of off and yeah i mean it, it sucks but it does happen next question why do you guys always do airbnbs instead of hotels there's two main reasons why we typically stay in an airbnb the first one is we like to have a kitchen so we can cook for ourselves it helps us save money it's a little bit healthier and it doesn't like break up our day when we have to go out for lunch and dinner and for me yeah. like second breakfast second lunch those kind of things <laughs> Uh, and also we have more working space in Airbnb, so hotels obviously just come with like a bed typically and not much place to like sit down and work yeah. and we can be more efficient yeah, we need, exactly. in these apartments. Yeah. Question number 10. How do you manage with storage? If you buy anything, do you throw old things away, leave them back or ship them home? Very simple answer. We don't buy anything. We only have like a rule, not a rule, like something that, like a tradition, I guess. So per country, we only buy one magnet and one coffee mug and that's it. We don't shop for clothes, we haven't shopped for anything in like a year since we left. We sold everything before we went on this trip. So we only have some clothes in Florida that are his parents and then like a box full of sweaters in Chicago at my parents and that's pretty much it. Yeah, we're living out of our suitcases. Mm -hmm. How do you do laundry when you travel? How do you always have clean clothes? How do I way? do laundry? I think it's just something from like the universe where it just like shows up, washed and folded on my bed whenever I need it. That must be so Very nice. Very strange phenomenon that happens while traveling. 
No, but seriously, we do try to stay in Airbnbs that have a washing machine. Like, for me, I prefer that all of them have it, but it's not always the case. So at least like once a week, one, once every couple of weeks, we need a washing machine. Um, in Mexico, that wasn't easy to find, so we had to take our clothes to wash and fold, which was amazing. I actually really missed them because it was cheap. Very right? affordable, yeah. very convenient. Everything just like handed to you. Yeah. Oh my god. Tidy little bag, oh my gosh. all folded up. Sometimes with the candy, it was awesome. Yeah. And in the rare occasion that we don't have either, like here in Albania, we do have to wash our stuff in the shower. So you make it work, you know, sometimes. Just wash your socks with shampoo. <laughs> it works, I think. <laughs> Question number 12, how do you guys find time to work while on the road? There are so many things to explore. That's a great question. And the answer is that we don't really have a choice. <laughs> like we have to work if we want to make this lifestyle sustainable. Traveling costs a lot of money. So mm -hmm. we can't just go out there and explore every day. And yeah. Just spend all our cash. Yeah, exactly. Possible. We're basically living out of our savings. So literally every day that we don't work, we're losing money. And we really want to make this lifestyle work like long-term for us. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have to. And that's part of the benefit of slow traveling. So we might stay at a place for seven days. And out of those seven days, we might make videos and explore for two or three. But most of the time we're actually like in our apartments just yep. like getting work done. But even like during those work days, we'll still like escape to do like an errand, like grocery shopping, yeah. or go to the banks. There's so always little things like that exploring. feel like, oh, like you're exploring, you're somewhere new. So it makes it exciting. Question number 13. Somebody asked, did you guys ever get sick while in Mexico? And can you brush your teeth with the water? So we read that you shouldn't brush your teeth with tap water, so we didn't. And we did get sick. It's not because of what you were thinking, probably. It's, it wasn't like market food, it was in the water, it, was, it wasn't like any of that. We got sick from eating pizza, like room service pizza from a nice hotel in Mexico City, the last two days of our trip. Mm -hmm. so this one is very specific to Merida. Best bar and restaurant you went to in Merida. I can speak for the bars. There are several good cantinas in Merida. We went to two. So one is La Negrita, the other one is El Cardinal. La Negrita is like a little bit less of an authentic like cantina experience, but they have like great live music. Oh my gosh, the music is yeah. great. It was like Cuban style, so not very Mexican, but still very cool to very experience. Fun. There was that one bar that... Sal Si Puedes yeah. is supposed to be very good, but we weren't able to go. There's a reason why I want to go back to Medina because it looks like an awesome bar, but it was closed. And restaurant, they are kind of like outside of the city. So like one is the Terraza Amarilla de San Francisco. I'll look that up, but I think that's the name. Mm -hmm. And the other one is La Pequeña Susana. That's great for panuchos, salbutes, so soba de lima. lima. Oh, mm -hmm. It's so good. It's like not cute, not fancy, but outside of the city, but 100% worth it. Mm -hmm. And both of them. Terraza Amarilla is the best spot in tacos, hands down. Those are the best tacos we had in our entire trip in the Peninsula. So we have to go there. And they're super nice. And say hi to Taquito, the cat. Hi, Taquito. The last question only said about Las Coloradas, which I assume they saw in one of our videos or Instagram posts saying that it was a tourist trap. So about Las Coloradas? Yeah, so Las Coloradas is like a pink lake close to Valladolid, more or less close. It's about two hours north uh, on the highway. And it's very famous on Instagram because people like fully saturate their photos and it looks very pink and like interesting, but it's man-made and it's not. not that pink. It's just like a body of water next to like a salt factory. factory. Mm -hmm. Super ugly. You can see it from a parking lot. They charge $30. $30 to, to go in to, to like take a photo. To take photos. And you can see the same exact thing from like 10 feet away from the parking lot, like Emma yes. said. It's and just, there was like a guy in the parking lot just making sure that you didn't cross cross like the road to take the photo for free. It's just like a tourist trap. Just skip it. I think that's what they they meant with that question, but it's one of my least favorite places that I've ever been. To. Yeah, we were we were very very disappointed that day. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. It's always so fun to make these type of videos and answer any doubts that you have about our lifestyle, traveling, any destination that we visit. And if you still have other questions, leave them in the comments, it's not too late. We are always so happy to help. And stay tuned because in one week, we're gonna start posting the videos for our new travel series. Yeah, we're in Albania right now and it has been an awesome adventure. We've done so many cool things like rode a communist era train, I might have milked a sheep. <laughs> We've done tons of cool stuff. We almost got killed by cows. It's been a lot of fun. The videos should be awesome. We Stay can't tuned. wait to show you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you for watching. It just stopped and gave us a look.
I'm auto sliding down the hill. Update. This is terrifying. I just want to be home. <laughs> I got it. <laughs>